Hello everyone. Um, welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. So last week I told you guys how we won the Emmy for engineering for Storyboard Pro. And so I gave you a little brief overview of the drawing tools and um, storyboarding aspect of Storyboard Pro. But Storyboard Pro goes beyond just drawing. It goes to um, organizing projects and doing animatics as well. So this week I'm going to talk about um, doing an animatic in Storyboard Pro and I think I will talk next week a little bit about the organizational um, parts of Storyboard Pro so that you can really understand why we won the Emmy because I think that um, you know we the re part of the reason why we won the Emmy is because of the pipeline aspect of Storyboard Pro and um, even for those of you who are single users who are working on your own projects at home um, you can still take advantage of Storyboard Pro to have a, a mini pipeline as a single person and it brings a lot of added value to your project. So that's why I'd like to go with that um, concept here. But let's just start with my simple project here that I have as my demo project that I started working on last week. Um, and so I've got a couple of panels in here that I did last week to show off couple of the drawing tools. I'm sorry that my drawings aren't the best drawings when I do these uh, for demos. I have to always go so fast so can't do a great drawing. Um, but one thing that that is um, kind of interesting about this whole software is the idea of doing some little bits of animation. And so whenever you're doing little bits of animation then you can go into the timeline workspace. Think of the timeline as anything that moves over time you'll want to do from here because here you actually have a playhead that you can slide. There's a default panel length that each panel is created with and you can adjust what the default panel length is in your um, in your preferences. Uh, but in here basically you can go in and you can change how quickly or slowly things are going. So actually what I'd like to do is I would like to take this first panel that I sort of drew very quickly in the thumbnail view yesterday and I'd like to add it to this scene. Because what I want to do is I want to use this panel as a as a blocker to block some animation for this guy coming into the scene. Then he's going to wave, and then he's going to turn around. So in order to add this to this scene, I can simply select the panel here, and I can drag and drop it. Now, if I drag it so that it's in so that the arrow here is facing down, it means I want to place the panel between these two scenes. If you drag it all the way so that it, the arrow is facing right it means you want it to be made the first panel in that scene to the right. And um, if you drag it so that the arrow is facing left, it's going to be the last frame or the last panel in the scene before to the left. So in other words, if I put it here, it's going to go right there. If I put it here, it's going to go at the end. Or I can put it after this scene. So instead, what I'd like to do is I just want to drag it so that I attach it to the previous scene. So I'll just drag it there. And you see that the colors now all match, and so I know that they're all in one scene. So now that these are all in one scene, then I can work on this as a scene. So I want to take this first panel, and I want to block in this guy entering the scene. So this is where I can use my transform tools. And if you did watch some of the storyboarding and 3D transform stuff, then you would have seen these already. But if I take my first frame transform tool, and that's the one with the green, then I can just drag my character outside the frame because he's going to enter from this side. And I can even resize him. If you resize, um, if you hold down shift, it's going to resize it while keeping the proportions the same. And um, it also, it does, when you do use these transform tools, it uses the pivot point to uh, make adjustments on the animation. So, you know, for, for just moving things around, leaving the pivot point where it is by default is fine. But sometimes if you'd like to do rotations, like if you want to animate the rotation through a panel, then you might need to move that pivot point. So there is a tool in the toolbar um, that is your pivot tool that you can use to adjust the uh, pivot point. Now you might also notice that I just customized my toolbar. By default, you can't customize this toolbar because by default, um, there are some nested tools. In other words, you have the select tool and then you can click and hold on the select tool and there are other tools that pop out underneath it. When you have a nested toolbar, you can't customize this toolbar. But I like to be able to customize my toolbar. And so if you do, then you can just go into your um, global UI tab in the preferences. And then in under UI style there at the bottom, there's something that says flat toolbar. 
And so if you take if you uh, make your toolbar flat, then you'll be able to customize it. But you do have to relaunch the software, as it says there. So since mine's already flat, I don't have to. But I do have the ability now to right-click on the two lines at the top and then hit Customize and adjust which tools are showing. So I just selected a tool, and I clicked the right-facing arrow, and I clicked OK in order to add my tool there. So now that I've got my pivot tool, I just want to show you that you can adjust the pivot point of where the translations are moving. So now if I go back to my transform tool, it would you know, scale and rotate from there. So then I can go to the last frame, and on the last frame now I'll drag this guy into the scene. I could also, by the way, do a bit of scaling on this. So if I want to fake uh, a zoom, then I can, or fake him walking towards the camera, then I can scale him down, and then if I play through this panel, then we see it moving in now. There's also something that's called the camera preview, and this is something that kind of confuses people sometimes. The camera preview is enabled in your playback toolbar, and the playback toolbar, whatever you adjust on here, um, is applicable both when you hit the play button and when you scrub through. So when I scrub through, I'm seeing the scene from the point of view of the camera because I have something here called camera preview on. So if you unclick that or uncheck the camera button, then what happens is when you play through the scene, you just see it in the blocking way. So you see it the same, you see it at whatever zoom level you're in your camera in. So if I zoom in there, then it just leaves the zoom level alone. And um, so for the purposes of just doing plain old storyboarding, it's probably better or more useful to turn off the camera preview, but it's a personal preference. You can also turn on the camera mask if you want to just mask out so you can see what's going on within the camera. So now from here, I've done a little bit of first frame, last frame animation, but I think the framing of the camera is not so good. So I think I'd like to go back and adjust my camera. So to adjust the camera frame, you can click, click on the camera tool and you can adjust the entire camera frame as a static frame, in other words, as a frame that doesn't have any movement on it or any keyframes on it, by just dragging on the black frame here. It's black because there are no keyframes on it. So then if I play through again, you see it's adjusted the entire scene. So I like that framing a little bit better. That works better for me. Um, and if you do want to add keyframes, though, you can do that. Um, let's say, let's take this character here at the end. Let's put a little first frame, last frame animation on him as well. And the first frame, last frame animation works on a layer basis. So I selected my first frame tool, but I don't see my manipulator. And I don't see it because I don't have my rough layer selected. So as soon as I select the layer that contains the drawing, I'll be able to put a keyframe there and a keyframe later on. So he's going to just walk out sideways. So now I've got this him moving in, his wa him waving, and then he's going to walk over that way. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to track some camera movement as he's walking. So I'll track with him as he's walking. 